Right, so this week we're going to sort out some of these things and show you how to do whippings on the end of rope and the different types of whipping you would do for, say, a three-stranded rope like this compared to a multi-strand rope like this. Okay, so we'll start with the three strand. No. So this one has got two strands and then one that's come undone. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little whipping here and then cut this horrible bit off and make the rope tidy and useful again. So uh, this is whipping twine. Um, you can buy actual whipping twine or you can buy wax coated cotton and or wax coated um, whatever this is, but some sort of wax coated thread is good. So this one, you want to leave a nice long tail. And tail is just a bit of string before you start doing turns. And so we're going to leave this on the reel because we're going to go around quite a few times. And we're going to pick a point and just start, start at that point. And then we're going to go around probably 10 times or so. Generally you want to do the diameter of the rope in length up the, up the piece of rope. When doing this, it's quite important that you keep the twine really tight as you do it. You don't want it sliding around too much. So we're going to do that and you're going to see this bit done quite a bit quicker than what I'm going to do, actually do it in. So the whipping is about the diameter of the rope at this point. And what we need to do is we need to make another tail, nice and long, so you don't want to be short, otherwise you have to do it again. So we need to cut that. Okay. So we now have a bit of string on each side. And this sometimes requires a needle. Um, sometimes you can untwist the rope and get in, but this rope's particularly old. So you're not gonna be able to untwist it. So we're gonna use a needle and thread and a palm, which is one of these, helps you push the needle through. And for working conditions. Right, so we're gonna use a sailmaker's needle and they're a bit beefier than your average sewing needle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the gap here and aim for the next uh, like dip in the rope and this can be often hard to push through, which is why you use a palm like this. Mm -hmm. See if you can see. And you can wiggle and aim with the palm. And you want to aim so it pops out there. <laughs> Where are we going? Yeah. So you want to aim so it pops out at this point. Push it through. Sometimes you need pliers to pull it out, but a little wiggle and it normally comes. And then you want to make sure that the tail comes all the way through. And then what you do is you go up here and you make sure you get the end in here and you want to go through that and go from, you follow this, follow this line up, you go in here and you pop out the next one. And you're going to go around the whole rope twice like this. And you see, what you do is you end up with a line on the outside of your piece of rope that goes up. And then what you do is, uh, with the needle or with a marlin spike, you wrap it around a couple of times. And then you can pull that nice and tight. And it pulls the whipping all the way in. And that way you keep the texture, the, the shape of the rope. And then your next step is you go from this point back down the rope but following the groove, so you're aiming for this point here. And you get that in there, and you aim for the next gap round. Like that, get the end out. Wrap it around, give it a wee pull. And that way you've got one line going up each of the three 
things and you're left with your first tail. And so some people can just cut it off here. Uh, what I like to do is I like to pass it just down again through the whole whipping and so that it goes diagonally through the entire rope and comes out somewhere near this point here and that's where I would cut it off. Uh, but so it's through the rope, it's a lot harder. <sighs> Passing it through the rope this way because where the whipping is, it has tightened the strands of the rope, which makes it incredibly hard to pass a needle through it which is kind of the point. Because we've gone through the rope compressed by the whipping, you need the pliers to uh, pull the needle out sometimes. So you grip the needle as close as you can to the rope and you push with your thumb. Rather than trying to pull with this hand, you push it out like this. And that way it doesn't fly across the room when it suddenly comes out. And then you need to repeat it. Repeat this going round and then threading it back through with the other end. And that way it ensures that nothing comes undone. So it comes out somewhere like that. Oh. Give it a wee grip and push. Like this. Pull that nice and tight. Give it a wee wig on, reset the fibers. And then all we have to do is snip one, and oh, I've caught that. Got that in one of the fibers and one of the strands, so and then we snip this as well. And then this one is a nice tight whipping, and we'll just cut the rope here. But we're going to get a chopping board for that. <laughs> so a lot of people cut rope by putting a knife on it and sawing away at it. And it can spread all the fibres. And actually I've found a better way of doing it is to have a really heavy knife, which this isn't, or a chisel. And you do a nice straight cut at least the diameter of the rope, if not a diameter and a half away from the whipping. And you just end up cutting through it this way. And that way all the fibers stay nice and compressed. This is really good if you're going to heat seal it and melt the end of the rope, which this rope does. Let's find a lighter. Okay, right. And so on plastic ropes, it's always good to seal the end with a wee bit of heat. And so it doesn't take too much just to catch the phrase. And this way, if you were to use a rope like this, it would just with the heat on the end, it would always break apart and fray again, unless you really melt it. Um, see, like this. But with it whipped, it doesn't really matter. You're just trying to stop all the little tiny loose fibers getting off. But that is number one. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you is a one where you don't need to use a needle. Um, but it is important to make sure, if, especially on a multi-strand rope, that the, the inner layer of the multi-strand rope is sealed to the outside. So what we're going to do first is, we're, even though this is a wee bit melted, we're going to melt it again just to make sure that it's definitely sealed together. Uh, because sometimes the inner can work its way loose and pull out of the outer, which is what the whipping will be attached to. And it's really important that you don't touch this afterwards. 
because that is really molten. And so we're just going to use the back of the chisel just to roll it around a wee bit until it's cool enough to do in your fingers. Um, and now the outside is sealed to the inside, which is really important. And then the whipping would just help consolidate all that whenever it comes to using the rope. Okay, so for this one, we are gonna work about here because we're not gonna cut the rope afterwards. And what we're going to do is we're gonna make a loop like this. And we're gonna put that you know, on the rope like this. I am exaggerating it a wee bit. You could probably get away with, with about that much. Like this. So, and then the two bits of string, one goes this way. So you wanna cross them over like this and start your whipping. Like this. And then again, you want to whip, keeping it nice and tight so it squeezes into the rope the line and you want to do the full at least the diameter of the rope in length of the whipping so you get a few of these on and then just push them down all together so there's no rope showing through making sure to keep that whipping nice and tight all the way around. And so that is probably enough for this one. So we're just going to trim that, get rid of that. And so what we want to do is, you see we've got this loop. We want to put this end through the loop like this. And then we want to pull this out down into here. Not, it won't go through. If you've done it tight enough, it shouldn't go through. With a good pull. And then you end up, once the loop, you can see it inside, pull along. But what you want to do is get it about halfway and then trim the two ends like this. Um, so that you don't have any tails sticking out like that. And that way, you can see how tight it is because you can see how much it's going in there. So, but that one's nice and tight as well. That rope won't fray anymore either. So if you like this sort of thing and you want to see me make and repair more random things, then please remember to subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.